the Virginia 500 on Fox is brought to you by McDonald's. By Viagra. Ask your doctor if Viagra is right for you. By Autolite Spark Plugs. It's time to change your plugs. And by Stacker 2, the world's strongest fat burner. Welcome back to Martinsville. Mike Joy, Larry McReynolds, Daryl Waltrip. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. has opened it up. His lead over Jeff Gordon now 1.2 seconds. Only one car in the garage, the Team Virginia Chevy for Hermie Sadler of Emporia. Moments ago, a little bit of more than casual contact. Yeah, what happens here is Mikey gets into the side of the 31 car, takes him out of control. Looks like they were both trying to go the same direction. Into each other. A, a magnetic attraction. You know what? Possibly Derek Coke coming off pit road could have provoked that Michael moving up because Derek Coke was coming off pit road with 37 car. I tell you, there's going to be some tired guys. This race, this is a lot of green flag racing for a short track like Martinsville. Normally, we'll run 50 or 75 laps, catch a caution, debris, caution, car spin out. We've got a lot of green flag racing here today, folks. That's right. We've only had two caution flags, and the last one was 100 laps ago as Tony Stewart takes fourth place from Rusty Wallace, who went up the racetrack going into turn one. The AOL Chevy of Jeff Green going to go a lap down to Dale Jr. Make that two laps down. And I tell you what, we talk about being worn out. Jeremy Mayfield in the 21st position, he just went a lap down to leader Dale Earnhardt Jr. just a little bit ago. And I'm sure what he told his crew is, guys, the bad news is I'm having a power steering problem. We got a report from our pit guys that he's having a power steering problem. His crew chief told him, no, no, the bad news is there's 300 laps to go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Dick Bergren. Well, Rusty Wallace, car number two, has slid back to the pit position. Mike, I have been monitoring his radio, and Rusty has not said a word about the car not being right. His lap times have been pretty close to those of the leader, and uh, he has not called for any adjustments. Meanwhile, let's put our hands together and give a round of applause for Kenny Schrader, car number 49, qualified well, started in the fourth position. He is one of the top ten all day, currently running seventh. Crew chief Scott Eggleston has been egging him on, telling him what a great job he has done, and indeed he has, and the crew has all day given him terrific stops. That, that's big for two reasons. At the end of last season, folks had kind of written Kenny Schrader off as a fellow whose Winston Cup career was in its twilight. And people had written off the 49 as a team that couldn't go anywhere no matter who was in the car. All the naysayers have been proven wrong. Yeah, I mean, this has to be a, a great shot and arm for this group. They had a great Daytona Speed Week. But this year so far, no top 15 finishes this year. Remember, Kenny Schrader is working on 12 years without a Winston Cup win. Now, Bobby Labonte joins this battle. It's Schrader, Craven, Labonte for 6th, 7th, and 8th as they lap past Derek Cope. Schrader just got around Craven, and now here's Labonte looking at, look at him as well. So uh, Craven slide back a little bit now. Now, Derek Cope is going to be just as fast, if not faster than these, despite being lapsed down uh, because he just pitted for fresh tires. He got more going coming out of the pit over tonight, like, like Larry pointed out, I think that's what happened to Michael in the 31 car. Yeah, most of our leaders right now are out there with 100 laps on their tires. Here's a battle between Terry Labonte and Mark Martin. That's a battle for 15. Steve? Well, Mike, D.W., you mentioned how this has been a long green flag stretch and how it might be hard on brakes. It is hard for Terry Labonte. He told crew chief Jim Long that he feels like all he has left is front brakes. Jim Long reminding him to turn on the fans. They're going to pit in about 9 or 10 laps. And again, we, we haven't, they're going to pit under green at Martinsville? Wow. It's like when we saw green flag stops at Bristol. I don't know when the last time I saw a green flag stop at Bristol. And we're going to see them here today. It's unheard of. Kenny Wallace now going for 16th against Mark Martin. It's like Mark's car is definitely going away. I, if you heard him talk about we're getting close to some green flag pit stops, the cars are starting to definitely slide around now. And the thing that bothers me about the pit stops is now you're going to get guys coming in getting tires and they're going to be a lot faster than guys on old tires. You get hung out and 
and the reason these guys really have to go is that leader is right behind them. And then Kenny Wallace in the 23 car, what he did, he was about to go a lap down. He decided to come to pit road and make his pit stop. This will be four tires adjustments, I'm sure, Steve Burns. Trust me, come on. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Philippe Lopez, are you sure this is the right thing to do with the first car off pit road? Philippe said, trust me, going to take four tires of that 23 of Kenny Wallace. Left side tires going on. And Kenny Wallace is away. And the problem with green flag stops here, I mean, look right here. This is where you enter pit road. This is where you go off pit road. And you have to maintain 30 miles per hour, so you're going to go a minimum of about two laps down. Here's where you go in pit road right here, all the way around, down this front stretch. It's three-fourths of the racetrack, and again, 30 miles per hour, including the pit stop. So you're going to lose two laps, no matter what you do, if you pit under green. Plus, you don't have a lot of time to make adjustments, mostly just air pressure. So if you're not very good, you're going to get an air pressure adjustment, and that's about it. knocked in uh, pretty good. It's not rubbing, but it's knocked in pretty good. So whoever who's carrying tires are about to pull down a little bit on the top. No rub, though. No rub. Uh, just adjust my air pressure. Step on. And what DJ said is, don't mess with no fender if it's not rubbing. I need a quick pit stop. Do something that don't take long, but just air pressure before I get to that pit box. Right. Don't rebuild the car under green. Just give me some gas and some tires and get me out of here. Jarrett racing for seventh place against Kenny Schrader. And then this is one of the places, again, we're, we're running fast speeds here, but there's a place you can get by with that right front fender like that. It would be here at Martinsville. And I'm going to tell you what, as good as he's running, I wouldn't fix it anyhow. I would only fix it a little bit. <laughs> well, that looked like your right front for half the race yesterday. <laughs> into somebody. I don't know who it was. Bickle, maybe. There you see Dale Earnhardt Jr., something we've not seen a lot this year either. Just put Ryan Newman in that 12 car lap down. So now we're to 16 cars on the lead lap. Mark Martin, the last car on the lead lap. Dale Earnhardt Jr. leading Jeff Gordon and Tony Stewart. Jimmy Johnson, three seconds back. Rusty Wallace, four and a half seconds down to the leader. 